Hey everybody, it's the coach, and this is Madden 19 on EA Sports. Coming up, Pro Bowler Derek Carr and the Oakland Raiders as his guys get set to take on Case Keenum and the Denver Broncos. I'll have scores around the league for you at the half, but it's time for a little football. So we'll hand it over to our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Coach, we find ourselves at the foot of the Rockies, Denver, Colorado, for this edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Just a short time ago, sounds loud enough to reverberate across the Rockies. They're ready for football in Denver as the Broncos get set to do battle with Derek Carr and the Oakland Raiders. And hello again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, we look at this Bronco team. They've been buoyed by getting two home games right at the start, and they come off a good victory in week one. And going back through the tape, I thought they looked pretty good last week. It was a solid win, a comprehensive win. On the other side of the field for the visiting Raiders, they too were winners last time out, so something's got to give here. And I love it when both teams come in off of wins. Great mindsets, and it usually leads to a really well-played game. Two teams here fresh off week one victories who can keep it going as we're underway on EA Sports. Now on the return, Brendan Langley. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. It'll be Case Keenum leading the charge, making his first start in a Bronco uniform here in this one. And the 2018 draft when the Broncos number came up at five, Plenty of chatter that they might take a quarterback right there. Remember, Josh Allen was still on the board. Josh Rosen was still on the board. But the Broncos made a commitment to Case Keenum in free agency, and they're living up to it. Did not take a quarterback in that slot. Going to ride with their new number four, Case Keenum. Here's Royce Freeman, the first carry for the rookie. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. The offensive lineup now, and the guy we highlight, Emmanuel Sanders. You can use him in any spot as a wide receiver. In the slot, out wide, it doesn't matter. He just makes plays. Keenum to throw on second down. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. They'll get a couple yards on that one. And that's going to bring up a third down. Quickly now, the starting 11 for the Oakland defense. An absolute force off the edge is Khalil Mack. His third straight season with double-digit sacks in 2017. And he gets it done in a variety of ways. Has strength to bull rush people. Has excellent pass rushing moves to make people miss on his way back to the quarterback. And sometimes he just absolutely outruns the blockers to get to him and put him on the ground in the pocket. Got him in. He finds Sanders. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Keenum to Sanders for the Denver first down. Nice catch right there. Brings to mind the sentence. When in doubt, find your veterans. He used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You, know, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this. When he was young, he thought the crafty veteran was simply a guy who couldn't run anymore. Now he understands a little bit better. They'll run with D'Angelo Henderson and give him about five as he gets this up to the 48-yard line. Pardon, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. Here goes the hot. Off play action. Keenum. And down he goes. Brought down a Raiders sack. Bruce Irvin in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. 
A few issues here on the offensive line. Apparently, he got sacked five times last week. They got to him here in the first quarter. And I would think that running the ball would be paramount here because it's a different team they're facing, but they watch the film as well. So they'll take many of those same principles and try and apply them in this game to see if they fixed what was wrong with them in the last game. Throwing on third down, Keenum. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Rashawn Melvin that time able to make the play. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. So on fourth down, here's Marquette King to punt it away. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. So here comes the Raider offense now onto the field. They'll be let out by their quarterback out of Fresno State. It's the pro bowler, Derek Carr. I spent plenty of time this offseason listening to people debate about whether Derek Carr is actually a top-10 quarterback in the NFL or whether he's more a middle-of-the-pack guy. If he's a top-10 quarterback in the league, then you're thinking playoffs for your team. They go play action here on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Yeah, the offensive starters here for the Raiders. Let's highlight a big strength of this team, the offensive line led by Donald Penn, Kelechi Osemele, and Rodney Hudson. All three were pro bowlers in 2017, but it didn't translate as well as they wanted on offense. Just 23rd in scoring and a 6-10 record. Now the first carry for Marshawn Lynch. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. On the defensive side of the ball here, are the starters for Denver. This unit, third best in the NFL in stopping the run. We know it's only week one, but the results look pretty good so far. The key is, can they do it week in and week out? Because right now, they're not awarding any championships or trophies after one week of performance. Got some nice young faces playing for them. Let's see if they can get this going. Throwing his car on third down. And he completes it to Jordan Nelson. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Townsend to punt it. Back deep is Carlos Henderson. Now the Broncos offense, they get set to head back onto the field. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches... Don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, you had to punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. And he takes this from the 30 to the 34. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? And the third down pass falls incomplete. And this pass defense, they were sensational in the win last week, and they're looking good here so far in this first quarter. You know, we often talk about how offenses get locked in, and that runs over multiple games where they're really, you know, in that zone. Defenses can be the exact same way, and I think we're seeing an example of it here. And now Oakland ready to take the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? And they work this well upfield across the 45. A really good pickup of 28 yards. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. 
and reading your keys. You always hear about that and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. First down, the run with Lynch. And he's got it across midfield and in the Denver territory. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. No surprise watching Marshawn Lynch scatter bodies as he runs, but I remember doing games with his at Cal. I remember the moves, the jump cuts, the elusiveness, as well as the strength. Carr gives to Lynch on the draw. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. A three-yard pickup on second and four. Now they'll need to convert here on third and a little more than a yard. Well, that's some good tackling there to keep him short of that yellow line. Yeah, defensively, all I'm thinking is that on that play, get me to third down. Get me into a position where I can make one more play and get my defense off the field. They'll run it. Here's Lynch. And he's going to be met at about the 43. He needed two. He got one. And that's going to leave him with fourth down and a yard. But we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. Here now, Johnny Townsend as he'll punt it away for the second time. And now on fourth and one, it's a fake. And he is not going anywhere. They stop him for no gain. The tackle by Tremaine Brock. Anytime a fake doesn't work, we usually focus our attention on the guys that were unsuccessful. But how about the defensive guys? They have to plan all week. They have to prepare all week. Special teams, they look like they were educated for that one. Educated on their toes and getting a big stop. And Denver getting set to take the field. They've had it twice. They punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? To the sideline. Look at that catch, dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and, of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. This is Freeman on first and ten. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. They'll run it now out of the gun, and he'll take this one down to about the 40. The all-pro in two positions, Khalil Mack there to make the stop. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well. But when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him. And some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. He'll rifle this. And this is taken in at the five. And he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Corwin Sutton, his second touchdown on the season. And the Broncos have taken the early lead. Good start to the season for him. He had the touchdown last week in the opener and a second one in week two now. How about the pace he's already established, right? Not sure he can keep it up for an entire season, but don't burst the bubble because he thinks that he can. Do guys go into a season with a goal for touchdown scored or yardage? What do you think? I Rick? think every single one of the guys who's going to touch the football, they all have those types of goals. They all have those types of thoughts. And then they just have to see how the season unfolds if they can stay with it. Unfolding so far so good for him. So that drive, four plays. And it ends with a Denver touchdown. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. 
And to no one's surprise here in Denver, that'll carry through the back of the end zone for a touchback. So out come the Raiders. Carr and the Raiders come up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Carr to throw after the play fake to Lynch. He's going to look deep down the field. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Justin Simmons. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Keep in mind, he had the three interception game last week, so we requested to talk with him this week. He was all smiles. He's still all smile. Yeah, we didn't jinx him at all, did we? No. Because ordinarily that happens, uh, things fall off. But not in this case. I think a lot of it goes back to his technique. His ability to see the quarterback throw the ball while understanding where the receiver is running his route allows him to make a lot of plays on the football, and he's taken it away at a really high rate. with Freeman here to begin the drive. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. The numbers for Freeman a week ago. 23 carries, 90 yards. That's a good start to the season. They got the win, and they were able to establish a good running game. Nothing that just blew people away, but a nice solid base to get things started. And they expect that to get tuned up and get better as the season moves on. They fake the handoff. Now Keenum. He'll air it out deep for Thomas. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Well, it doesn't take any great analysis. No jokes, partner, okay? All right, on this one. But we just know that we're going to see this as the game moves forward. There's going to be two guys on him at just about every snap. It's kind of a dare to throw his way, but they have to keep throwing his way. The benefits could be great. You throw it to a great receiver, he could come down with it anyway. The Broncos on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This time it's third and three. Here's Keenum. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Carl Joseph. And he's able to get it back to the 33-yard line. Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. And now here come the Raiders. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one-play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. And he's going to take this one down to the 25. Now it looks like we've got a Raider here, slow to get up. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. On third down, they go Lynch. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. 
I think what we just saw there, partner, was linebacking speed that can trump O-line power. We see that at times because he filled the gap before the offensive lineman could get to the next level and take him on. Giorgio Tavecchio now for the Raider field goal. From the left hash mark, this a 43-yard attempt. The kick by Tavecchio is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. They got the interception, but very little movement after, and that forces him to settle for three. And it does feel like settling when that happens, doesn't it? It certainly does, but we got to give a lot of credit where it's due, and that's to the defense because they ran onto the field. It's what we call sudden change, right? Interception, you got to go put out the fire, and they did, holding them to a field goal. This is taken at the three. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Now Case Keenum in the offense heading back onto the field. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. And there's the first tackle of the game for Carl Joseph. He's one of those safeties that you can utilize in any way you want. But I will have to say, I think the number one thing he does best is tackle. Now it's Keenan. And yeah, that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. Well, we're not playing three yards in a cloud of dust football anymore. I kind of get why those old school coaches sometimes didn't want to throw the football. Because if it's popped up in the air, it almost turns into slow motion. And both sides trying to get to the football, and you're holding your breath wondering whether it's going to go good or bad for your team. Complete out right to Jake Butt. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. Obviously, they didn't get everything they wanted on that completion, but they put themselves in a spot where you've got to at least think about going for it. I know where we are on the field, but still, you've got to think about it, don't you? Here's Marquette King now as he's on to punt for Denver. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. Carr and the Raiders come up first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Now Carr. And that is incomplete. Jared Cook, the tight end, was the target. That'll bring up second down. I wouldn't be shocked at all right now if there's a look of surprise on the big fella's face because he had the round that he wanted running the corner. And usually, he's able to use his body and catch the football. But a really nice play by the defenders, able to knock it away. Again from the 20 after the incompletion. Here's second and 10. On second down, Lynch fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we've hit the end of quarter one. 7-3 the score. EA Sports NFL Sunday returns following this. Ready to go now in the second quarter. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis. It's the Raiders in possession of the football. They're staring up at a third and nine to start it out. From the gun, it's Carr. Goes underneath to Martin. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. It's a gain of six on the play. And that's going to make it fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle.
Here now, Johnny Townsend as he's on to punt for Oakland. He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. And this will be taken at the 13. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And the Broncos take over, first down and 10. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. It's the second quarter. His team has the lead, but I think he's hoping for a little bit more production out of himself. And we often talk about preaching patience to a runner when things are a little bumpy in the early going, but we have to do the same thing with the offensive line. They can't wait to halftime to make the adjustments. They have to do it from series to series so those surface tablets come into play. Check out what the defense is doing and see if they can find a better way to run it. So they search for that patience here now. Give him nine on the play, and that'll make it second and short. it here with Keenum firing quickly but it's incomplete you get a tight end like this and you know he's used to dishing out punishment but here he's one that has to absorb the contact and as a result unable to hold on to the football now it's Keenum here off the bootleg he's going to leave this for his running back it's complete Denver has a first down on the 15 yard play we can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Trying to get it to Thomas, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Carl Joseph. And it's a good return here as he'll get all the way up close to the 35. He was trying to hit Thomas that time. And that's now the second time he's picked off a pass here in the first half alone. Again, another great read defensively. And you just see him get in the right position to make the play and get his guys the football back. Marshawn Lynch heading back out into the huddle. They've given him some touches. They haven't had a lot of success on the ground. Do you maybe keep going to that well, or do you mix it up more? I think you mix it up more, try and loosen things up. Get the defense to react to other people, other plays, but don't forget about it. That's your horse. You know, Secretariat lost twice in his career. <laughs> so educational. That's very true, kids. Look it up. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. A 10th carry of the game for Marshawn Lynch. And there just continues to be nowhere to run. He's bottled up again at the line of scrimmage. They just keep trying, but so far, finding no room for him to run. Not none whatsoever. In fact, you run the numbers. He's under three yards a carry at the moment. Thunder, now they'll throw with Carr. And there is Amari Cooper, his first catch. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Cooper's first catch, and good for a first down. It's funny, when I go back to our pregame meeting with Amari Cooper, and we mention, eh, what if they play man coverage against you? He almost seemed offended by it, didn't he? I'll beat it. That's basically <laughs> what he said, right? I mean, the best receivers we've ever talked to and covered, when you talk about covering them with one guy, they think that's a personal affront. If they feel like if they can't just beat one defender, then they're not very good. Carr gives to Marshawn. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. 
Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Here's a give to Lynch. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. It's the linebacker, Brandon Marshall, there on the tackle. So he runs it for one yard, then no gain. I don't know that you go back to that well here on third down. Yeah, I don't know that you do as well, but if you want to get the ball to him, if you want him to have it, maybe get him into space and throw it to him. On third down, Carr. And the Broncos get there and take him down. Von Miller in there for sack number 85 of his great career, moving him past Hall of Famer Howie Long on the all-time list. Well, that's a pretty darn good start to his season, huh? A sack in the opener, and a second one here. That tells you about his offseason. He came in determined to have a big year, and it's paying off. The first update from Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. It's the Lions that have grabbed the early lead. And we'll keep you abreast of how that one shakes out. Here now, Johnny Townsend, as he's on to punt for Oakland. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And Denver getting set to take the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough. Swing the tight end free downfield for the completion. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, you've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. I like the look that they just showed there. When you come out of a passing formation, spread things out a little bit, makes it really hard to cover the middle of the field, doesn't it? Because yeah. you've got to go out to the perimeter and cover those guys. Yep, exactly. Got some good blocking, too. Helped him pick up the first. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now a play fake here on first down. Looking long for Thomas. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. And that's what he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. On second down, Freeman. And he'll rumble for about five, up close to the 40. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Keenum now to throw. And he's got his man on the out route. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That one good for 13 and a Denver first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Keenum now, 8 of 17 so far, so under 50%, but he's got a first and 10. Now a handoff. It's Freeman. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. 
That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. Freeman. And this time not as successful as he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. And hang on here. Freeman shaken up. Remaining on the ground after that last play. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. The Broncos on third down. Five out of nine thus far. This will be third and five. Shotgun snap for Keenum. Sanders has it over the middle. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. That one good for 13 and a Denver first down. Keenum on first down. Now he'll escape to his right. And he'll go down at the 28. Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. Yeah, he only gets a few yards on first and 10, but he's better off doing that than throwing an incompletion or even worse, an interception. Throwing is Keenum. Over the middle, open is Thomas. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. Two minutes remain here in the first half. Back to Denver right after this. A reminder coming up at halftime. The coach is back. He made it through the first weekend. That's the good news. And he's going to regale you with stats and scores from around the NFL here in the early games in week two. You think he questioned coming back for week two, having to work with us? I think he did. He's just happy that he is far away in Orlando. Throwing his Keenum on third down. Got an open man. It's Fumagalli. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. So on fourth down, on comes Brandon McManus and the field goal unit for the Broncos. From the left hash, this will be a 41-yarder. And McManus able to put it through. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10-3. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13-play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal. You did a nice job there. But here's the other part. 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes, you don't take the ball away, maybe that's the way they should look at it. Here comes Nelson. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. And now Oakland ready to take the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. To throw its car. And he will go down outside of the pocket for a sack. Tried to get away, but could not. Shaquille Barrett able to get him down behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of a yard. Car to throw on second down. In the middle of the field, he's got Nelson. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. That catch good for five. It's third down. To throw on third down. Carr, he completes it to Bryant. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. Carr now on first down. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. 
I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. Carl try it again on second down. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Cook. The Raiders going to use one of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. On third down, that's Lynch. And he will have the first down as he gets this to the 47. Now the Raiders going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. On first and 10, here's Carr. And Nelson's got it here right side. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. A gain of six there on first. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. was the pickup on the last completion so here's second and four on play action it's Carr and that'll be incomplete with 11 seconds remaining now The Raiders on third down, lacking much success. Just two for seven to this point. This is third and four. Working from the gun, it's Carr. And that is incomplete. Seven seconds remaining. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short. No good. And this score will stay right where it is. And that's the risk of the long field goal miss here at this stage of the second quarter. You give up great field position. And that gives them one more opportunity to make something happen and something big. And we've seen crazy stuff happen at the end of halves. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10. The final shot before half for Kano. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked up by Gary and Conley. And his guys are going to get the football at the 23-yard line. So we're at halftime here in Denver with the Broncos leading this one. As now we send you out to Orlando and hook back up with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, we'll get you back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, it's time for a trip around the NFL following an eventful opening weekend. Let's see what's happening in week two. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a defensive struggle. Which offense can break through in the second half? To find out, let's hand it over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. Out comes the Raiders offense. They'll go on offense first to start quarter number three. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. 
And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. And the first play of the drive there is incomplete. Maybe a little frustration starting to creep in. The offensive line hasn't done a great job of protecting him in this game. And there he was, hit again as he threw it. Yeah, another time on his backside. Probably starting to get a little frustrated. Got to keep his composure. Can't let the defense know that they're getting to him. Tough day, tough sledding right there. And it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. It's a gain of seven, and that'll bring up fourth down. A short gain that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Yeah, how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some gratitude <laughs> by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. Now Keenum finds Jake Butt over the middle, and he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. So first and 10 now from the 30. They go play action here on first down. That's caught left side by Jake Bunn. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Well, from an offense's perspective, that sure was pretty because the corner route is extremely difficult to defend from my perspective. What we just saw there, is that sort of the evolution of the tight end position? Yeah, I think it is because more and more, Tight ends are being treated like wide receivers. These are some agile players who can make a play in any spot on the field. So here's a first and 10 now in Raider territory at the 49-yard line. So that one will be accepted. Still first down. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. Now it's Keenum. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Sanders. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. They get the penalty yardage back, plus five more as they get it to second and five. Inside the 40 to the 39. Third catch for him on this drive alone, and it'll give him a first down. 
Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right, safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. They'll run it now out of the gun, and he'll be stopped up quickly here at the 38. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short gain. Throwing on third down, Keenum. Open man, and that's his tight end, Jake Butt. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. And they pick up 25 as they convert on third. And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? It takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football. Because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone. Sometimes you're throwing it between the zone. Sometimes the receiver's going to just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there. It's a tough read, but when they're in sync, it's really effective. And power running here down to the six-yard line. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence. Of and he will score! Touchdown, Denver! Case Keenum, his second touchdown of the game, his third on the year. And the Broncos will extend their lead. A good, sustained drive there in this third quarter, capping it off with a touchdown to give them a nice two-score advantage. It was actually a fun one to watch, wasn't it? I mean, for me, seeing the mix of what they did, how they moved the ball downfield, very sharp, too. Each and every play seemed to be executed with, with great dispatch. McManus's point after is good, and the lead is now 17-3. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive, and it's capped off by a touchdown run of six yards. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Here comes Nelson. Able to slither by, and he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Raiders offense now, they trot back out. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Carr to throw after the play fake to Lynch. Over the middle complete. That's Nelson. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. A very solid gain of 27. And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator's looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out which play will work well. He's trying to figure out how to get the ball to the playmaker that you just described. Looking down at that sheet, you find people plays, not necessarily X's and O's, and that's exactly what they did there. Delay of game, offense. 
Play clock all the way to zero. Didn't get the snap off. Five-yard penalty. And you see the head coach writing that note on his play sheet right now. He's going to be addressing that with his staff. A sense of urgency. Get to the line of scrimmage. Snap the ball. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. From midfield, here's Carr. And that's incomplete. It's always a good play when you're able to bat a ball away or down because if you actually tip it in the air, now the offense is getting a second shot at catching the football or another receiver may come along and grab it out of the air and turn it into a big play. So if you make a play on the ball, make sure it's knocked away or down. Otherwise, there could be some jeopardy. Handoff comes to Lynch. And they'll get him down here at about the 42. Call it seven yards on the carry, so a pretty good game, but still left with a tough third and eight. Well, that's why the guy with the headsets is down there. All right, they know what they're doing because they got stuffed on a running play on first down. And I think myself and probably the fans are saying throw the football in this situation. But he knew what he was doing, called another run, and now they've got third and short. It's a gain of five on the play, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Giorgio Tavecchio now for the Raider field goal. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And he's going to miss this one. That is no good. Well outside the left upright. And this score will stay right where it is. So another long try for three and another kick that comes up lacking. Yeah, this isn't going to do any wonders for his field goal percentage. But you have to figure as a head coach that when you send a guy out there to try and kick from that distance, it's a 50-50 proposition at best. And Denver getting set to take the field. They had to go a long way on their last drive to score the touchdown. This time, they get at least a little bit more of a cushion in the field position. I have to think that with this field position, after what they did on the last drive, they might want to take a shot right now and try and cut down the length of the drive. Now a play fake here on first down. And he rifles one incomplete. That one didn't quite make it to the target, but that's not always a function of the strength of the arm of the quarterback, is it? Sometimes there's just too much pressure there. In any case, the ball doesn't arrive. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. It'll be a gain of four, and they're going to face a third down. But well, it's tough to be a defender in today's NFL because there's so many things to account for in today's passing game, including the back sneaking out of the backfield. Not quite as bad as a turkey bowl where you have the center eligible stuff, but still a lot of guys to account for. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trait in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of... And they're going to get him. He's taken down for a sack back at the 47-yard line. Khalil Mack in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Play action. It's Keenum. He'll find Sutton on the right side complete. That one goes for 24 yards. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. So here's a first and 10 now in Raider territory as they're down to the 29-yard line. On play action. Now Keenum. This is caught. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. Corwin Sutton, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Broncos will add on to their lead. That 
drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical. That's one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now, starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. Now McManus to tack on the extra point. Extra point from McManus is good. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. That time, a six-play drive. And it culminates in a touchdown by the Broncos. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Here comes Ryan Switzer to return it. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. And now Oakland ready to take the field. And last time out, another missed field goal. So maybe their confidence wavering a little bit right now in the kicking game. And I'm with you on that. I think at this stage, they'd love to not run him back out there in a tough situation. But let's face it, they may have to. So right now, the head coach is talking to the offense coordinator and saying, call this game like we're going to put it in the end zone. Let's try and take the field goal out of it. And not much. Maybe a yard up to the 29. I think if they want to start getting back into this game, it behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. Now, you ready? Now Carr throwing on second down. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. Shaquille Barrett in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. So one quick, easy analysis about why they've struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. Carr and the Raiders following the sack, looking up at a third and long. Shotgun now for Carr. And that would not to be. It's incomplete. So they couldn't hook up as time has now run out on this third quarter of play. Three quarters in the books. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Welcome back now to Denver. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. Here now, Johnny Townsend standing just outside his own goal line. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, or that could have been trouble. On the NFL scoreboard, third quarter now from Jacksonville. And we're seeing an extension of the lead by the Jags. They're up pretty big. And we'll keep an eye on that one as our game goes along here. And Denver getting set to take the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. And that's the type of run that you'll live with. In this game, he's had a good number of carries. He's just been unable to really break off anything substantial. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. A gain of six there on first. So on that play, defense was in the zone. They ran a crossing route offensively, but the defense there, you got to be good with communication, don't you? You certainly do, and it's not something that is really evident when you watch it on the screen. And hit behind the line. He lost the football. It's loose. And the Raiders have recovered. The psychology of the game never ceases to amaze me because you would think there would never be a fumble from what we hear from coaches all the time, right? And how much they practice not fumbling. Practice it, preach it, talk about it all the time. You would think no one would ever turn it over. Yet they are humans out there running around. And we just saw another one. Opportunistic by the defense. the hand. 
handoff, Lynch. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. Sua Cravens up to make the stop. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. And he gets it down to the 32. Call it a gain is seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. As a passer, you're always trying to find that open window to throw the ball downfield. How about this one? Right in the middle. Looking for Cooper, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Brandon Marshall. And a terrific return as he brings this one all the way back to the 30. Cooper was the intended target. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage, they've all been excellent. And now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. Offensive unit ready to head back out onto the field. And a fumble last time. Ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. Don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first day of camp in the regular season, ball security comes up about what the second sentence of the coaches yeah. address. And those are so many drills focus on that. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. Doesn't always work out, though. Again, it's Henderson. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. And just a couple yards there down to the 17. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held them to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. On the carry is Henderson. And he'll get about three as he's taken down at the 14-yard line. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. On third down, it's Henderson, and he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. It's a pickup of four, but they're still a yard short here with fourth down, fourth coming. So many things go into making a good play on defense. In this situation, just not being blown out of the way was a big start and then a nice tackle to finish things off. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points, but this widens it out, as you said, and now it's all about ball control, isn't it? Derek Carr getting set and ready to go again on offense here. And that interception that ended their previous drive likely also ended any shot they had at victory. Yeah, long road back from here, no doubt about that one. But let's face it, if you're going to go out there and compete, you want to try and end on a strong note, don't you? Absolutely. It won't end in a victory, like you said, but they can maybe take something positive out of this one. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And brought in by the tight end, Cook. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it. They need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game. But this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time? Hopefully with a chance to win. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. From the gun, it's Carr. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. It's Chris Harris with a pick. Intended that time for Cooper. 
That is now seven, seven interceptions between last week and this week. Three in this game, four a week ago. And I saw the head coach write on his play sheet, make a little note. I hope he's writing self-scout. Bring in the guys that scout games for you with a different eye and watch him and see what's going on and maybe they can pick up what the flaws are and hopefully they can correct them. The Broncos offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And little room to maneuver there. He gets it down to about the 39. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. And the play clock is going to run out here. They're in no hurry to get a playoff. Delay of game, offense. Play clock down to zero, and that's going to be a delay. Still third down. Instead of a third and four, now they have to manage a third and nine after the delay of game. On play action, it's Keenum. He's going to loft one deep left side, and he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Demarius Thomas, his first touchdown here of the new campaign. And the Broncos turn that interception into a touchdown. They were still throwing with a comfortable lead here late, and now that lead even more comfortable. And your first thought is, is there bad blood that went into this one ahead of time that maybe they're seeking some revenge or they just don't like them? But the other thing that always hits me is, are they worried about playoff positioning? Right? Are they worried about, do you need enough points in case there's a tiebreaker that comes into play later? McManus now for the extra point. McManus's point after is good, and that will extend this big lead. So they only needed three plays on that drive, and it ends with a Denver touchdown. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now Oakland ready to take the field. And they've sort of lost their way, partner. How do they recalibrate and get this proverbial train back on track? Well, this is where leadership really comes into play. How's the head coach handling it? The offensive coordinator? Sometimes they just make a joke. All right, guys. You had your fun? All right. Throw it out the window. Yeah, let's get back on track here. And sometimes that'll work just fine. I guess it's time now to lean on that leadership. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. I don't think any of us were surprised that they decided to start this drive on the ground after the last two drives ended in interceptions. Unfortunately, though, not a lot going on on that first play. Yeah, I think the anticipation was felt also by the defense. On the give, this is Lynch. And he'll get about three here as he's out to the 30. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Give them 12 yards that time and an Oakland first down. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. First down, over the middle, it's Jared Cook. 
And he'll get it out to midfield. Let's see. Yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And what a really nice gain right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. Now, the waiting. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Operating from the gun, Carr, and Cook has it, left side. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. Solid gain of 18 and a Raider first down. His position, and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one, and that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league. Those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Monday, now. You want it? Car now on first down, and he'll hit the slant route. That's caught by Cooper. And certainly some style points there on the spin. Not a whole lot thereafter, but still a pretty good game. Now, 180. Now, Carr again. Time for a break. And he can't hang on. That's definitely going to be one he wishes he had back. Incomplete in the end zone. So it's Raider football as we get you reset. They face a third down now as they try to find a late score. Car to throw again. And he finds a man. It's Martin. And he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. Into the red zone, it's Carr. Roberts has it. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. Again, it's Carr. And that is caught. But the back judge right there to say incomplete. Trying to get it there to Martavis Bryant. And that takes us from second to third down. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head. Not be and he's across for the touchdown. Too little, too late. But he does get in for six. No wonder you're grinning. You just beat me in our fantasy league. Indeed I did, my good man. I know these wide receivers are about flash and dash and high-flying plays, but a good number of them played running back at some point in their career, and that's how they finish off a lot of their big plays, run after the catch. And this time he finishes off the big play in the end zone. for the extra point, Giorgio Tavecchio. Extra point up and good by Tavecchio. And that will shave one more off this lead. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it winds up in six points for the Raiders.
So it would no doubt be a miracle comeback from here, but let's see what they can do starting with the onside kick. And the Broncos are going to get the football. Uh, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Now Henderson. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. Reggie Nelson, the free safety, in on the stop. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. And I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. Here's Henderson. And he'll take this one down to the 36. On the tackle that time, Bruce Irvin. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So for the Broncos, they use the favorable early schedule to their advantage as they move to 2-0. And they'll hit the road next week to take on the Baltimore Ravens. Meanwhile, for the Raiders, they'll fall to 1-1. One and, one. and they'll look to regroup next week as they head down to Miami to take on the Dolphins. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Broncos are winners as we say so long from Denver.